So what's the difference between the chrome on a bumper and the chrome on an oil ring? Well, you know, there's really not that much because the installation process is pretty close to the same. And what's the problem with that, Link? Well, because they're both a plating. Yes. It's not really a coating, it's a plating. They're dipped. Mm -hmm. So while that chrome bumper looks really cool and it's nice and shiny and it's got durability. If you looked up at, looked at it really closely. There's peaks and there's valleys. Right, exactly. Which is why the old days when you had chrome, you know, top rings, it took forever to break in. You had to have really rough cylinder finishes. You had to do all these cylinder crazy looked, tricks. Looked like a sandpaper finish just to grind that ring in so it would seal. You had to grind those yeah, high spots exactly. off so it, it would seal exactly. up. Exactly. So with a chrome-faced oil rail, because that's what almost all oil rails, in a mm -hmm. three-piece oil ring, it's an expander in two oil rails, those oil rails are chrome face. They put that chrome on there because the ring is so thin, it was one of the only reasons they could keep the ring from wearing out really Exactly, quickly. so you can run a non-chrome yeah, ring. But it's gonna be gone really quickly. Exactly, so for to have that durability, you had to have the chrome, but the downside of that is those big peaks and it can streak the bores. And if you have a Nicosil coated engine, you, you can't, can't run them. Incompatibility of metals, it's just not, you can't do it. The ring will stick in the bore. So what we're doing today is we're actually testing a alternative coating. It's not chrome. Nope. It's not plated. It's actually a titanium nitride PVD style. So PVD is a physical vapor deposition. So it's actually done in a vacuum chamber. So it's super uniform and thin. You got rid of all the high spots and low spots. It's exactly. very uniform. Right. And then not still hard. It's still very, oh, very hard. Oh, exactly. It's yes. actually harder than chrome. Exactly. It's important to do the test sure. to see, sure. okay, will this thing break in and how, how you know, functional can it be? Yeah. But the other trick about this is that titanium nitride is the same gold coating that's on drill bits and machine tools. So if you've got a drill bit at home that's gold coated, that's your favorite drill bit because the thing never wears it out. It never wears out. There's a reason for it. Right. Because it's titanium nitride. Yeah, exactly. It makes very, it very hard. hard. Very so hard. we're going to take that same technology. Mm -hmm. We're applying it to... But we've actually been using it in the, the top on rings the top ranks. for yes. a long time. Exactly. And it's uh, in fantastic. Our, in our sprint car motors, we've been using that for a few years now, and it works out wonderfully. Right. So when you talk about a NASCAR engine that can run a you know, 020 top ring, and it can run 1,500 miles, it does that because of that titanium nitride right. coating on that top ring. Today, we're just going to see what happens if you apply it to a 16,000 oil. oil rail instead. Piston ring guy, I can tell you. It's going to be interesting. The bore finish is so critical on any ring seal. Mm -hmm. So our good buddy Brad Legman up at QMP has finished the bore sizes for this to the perfect finish that we want. And, and when I say that, we don't have a sandpaper finish anymore. No. It's actually fairly smooth. And so this test is going to let us know whether that hard ring, that really super hard coating mm -hmm. on that oil ring is actually going to wear in correctly. We, we kind of think it will, but we don't really know. And this test is going to prove whether it does or not. So how are we gonna be able to know that it's working or not, Don? Well, <laughs> there's a couple of ways that we're gonna know. One of the things that we're going to do is when a ring is not functioning correctly, what happens? Well. Blow the by. exhaust gases go by the rings mm -hmm. and it creates blow by. Mm -hmm. So we have done a lot of work working with rings and blow bys yes. over the last few years. We have a baseline on this engine. We, we know exactly. what this engine should do in terms of blow by. Sure. We're going to go mm -hmm. through our procedure that we normally yep. do as far as breaking everything in. After we get to that point, we're going to hook up that blow by meter. We'll be able to tell the difference between the chrome ring that was in here right. and the titanium ring that's in there now. Exactly. So that's how we're going to be able to tell, again, the blow-by is a disaster for any engine. It, that means that the exhaust valve is going into the crankcase, that's bad. Right, yeah. You want to keep the pressure above the piston ring, that's not in the crankcase. Right. So we can do, we can measure crankcase pressure and we've got a blow-by gauge yep. that can measure actually how much exhaust gas is actually blowing by and exactly. making its way out. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know more about the braking procedure we're about to follow, we'll leave a link in the description box below because we've got previous oh, videos, Lots of videos that show how that. to do all yeah. that. So let's shut up right now, go out the down control, get it fired up, do that break-in process, and we'll be back with an update when we know what she's doing. Let's start. Okay, Don, so we finished the break-in procedure. Yes, it went well, no issues. Everything right. did, everything went according to plan. Right, and we made the three baseline pulls we always do at the end of the break-in procedure. An interesting thing happened though during those uh -huh. break-in procedures. We know that using this dyno, one of the reasons why we love using this dyno is the accuracy of the dyno. So yep. you have data on the last 
number of tests that you did. Yep. We pulled that up on the screen. Yeah, we did. We ran we, the we, old foam ring, yeah. right? This is what we had in there before. Uh -huh. We pulled those up. Pulled the runs up as our baseline for this one. And really the only difference was this new titanium coated ring, which Lake's got a sample of right there. Right here, yeah. It was really the only difference. Now, our first pull was at 448 horsepower, was within one horsepower of what it was a few months ago when we did the thing. But what was different, Lake? A little more peak torque. And then as he made more runs, as it broke in, the torque went higher and higher and higher. What happens when we get more torque? Why, why does that happen? Reduced friction and exactly. better ring sealing. Exactly. So that was the first test. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start the motor back up, go through our normal test runs, you know, in full power, and look and see what the actual blow by is gonna do. Right, because the break-in procedure in those first pulls, or that, that's just what it is. It's part of our break-in procedure. Exactly. We do that every time, always the exact same way. We exactly. take an oil sample so we can see what's going on. The real testing. Right. This should be fun. So we'll get back to you in just a second, let you know how it goes. We're fired up, let's go. Awesome thing about the Superflow Dyno, it's really incredibly easy to use it. I can even use it. Let me just clarify one thing here. The, this is my dyno, and I don't even let Ron run this dyno. Lake's the only one that I allow run the dyno, besides me. It's special. So, we got a little bit of load applied, give it a little bit of throttle, turn on the ignition, hit the starter. She's up and running. She's gone. You All might right. be able to hear it from there. We're going to turn it up a little bit. So we're going to bring it up to about 3,000 RPM. The, the water's still, cooler's still on. You didn't turn it off? Did not turn the water so cooler off. So all we need to do is let the oil get up, get a little hotter? Yep. yep. Let the water temperature get up. Let the oil temperature get up a little bit. And then we'll see what we have. All right. We got the blow by meter hooked up so we can see what's happening as it actually runs real time. And we got the baseline from that before so we'll be able to see what does it do? We'll get back to that point where we're close. I'll run in real quick and turn that fan back on. Yeah. Our freeway fan, we call it the freeway fan. Yeah. Simulating what happens to an engine as it's running down the freeway. All right, so we're about 160 degrees almost now on the water, almost 240 on the oil. So we'll go ahead and make our first run now. Sure, sure. That'll, bring it, that'll add a little heat and bring it up a little bit and see what we got. Wow, that's, okay. that's pretty cool. For the first run, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, yep. that's very stable. The, the check ball in there is just really stable. We noticed that, yeah. you know, this yeah. is, the cylinder home we have here is really good. And this thing's really- And you gotta remember, nice. we did the, the break-in procedure, but they're not all the way broken yet. There's, right. uh, the more we run it, the better it should get. Right. All right, so we got a little more temperature now and all that, let's see what we got. Next pass, I'll go turn the fan on. Wow, that was better than I expected, actually. Well, every time we do something like this, like we're, we're doing the unknown. This is something right. that's never been tried before. It's never been done. So we didn't actually know. We hoped yeah. at, what, at the results that we were going to get, but we didn't actually know until we did. Yeah, so just swapping that chrome oil rail for the titanium nitride coated oil rail. Yeah. One, it broke in instantly. It came in quick. Again, right. the, the cylinder bars are finished very nicely mm -hmm. and, and that's gonna be a, a very important thing for in the future for those people that are gonna be buying this product. Right, but the nice side benefit we didn't expect to see was a nice increase in torque and it maintained. It's making well, I, you more know, I kept, torque. I kept asking you, because you know, you've learned so much since in the, how many years we've been here, why do we have more torque? Mm -hmm. Nothing else changing in the motor. Why, why does that happen? It's got to be a reduced in friction exactly. and increase in ring seal. Exactly. The only way torque goes up is the engines being more efficient. That's correct. Our horsepower numbers were very similar. They mm -hmm. were one or two more than our baseline figures, but the torque numbers were considerably higher, almost about nine or ten foot pounds of torque it's and the big. only reason that can happen is if there's less friction in there right peak torque is peak cylinder pressure exactly so that's where the rings are getting the most amount of load exactly so friction is the friction force times load 
So at a higher load, you're going to get more friction. The reduction of friction because of the titanium nitride coating yes. is what's allowing it to make more power at peak torque because there's less friction under that higher load. And the other thing that happened, we had the blow by meter hooked up. We did. And it was super smooth. You know, in the past, when we've seen it, that little check ball. The, the check ball would just jump. It'll bounce up and down depending on, you know, depending on the mm -hmm. load and, and the RPM range or whatever. Right. But this time. Very smooth, very, very stable. stable. Yeah, so very stable. I say between what we saw from the horsepower and torque numbers and the stability of the blow by, this is a winner. It, I think it's gonna work. Now we're gonna put a lot more time on this just to make sure what happens with time. And again, right. when we get to that point where we can actually disassemble the engine and look at everything, we'll have a definitive idea of, of what exactly is going on, but the initial testing has proved very positive. Exactly, because it's gonna take some time, just like Don said, to really test this out, to see how durable the coating is. We know right now the initial results look great, yeah. but we gotta have durability, so that's the long, boring part of the testing, mm -hmm. but we'll come back with another video when we have some more durability testing to show you on the results of these titanium nitrided coated oil rails. Exactly.